This is your three-minute radiation fallout forecast for Monday, May 21st, 2012. In Canada, radar imagery from Environment Canada shows rainfall occurring in South BC, Southern Manitoba, and around Ottawa, Windsor, and Toronto. The position of the jet stream and tropopause places BC at the highest risk of fallout, with possible risk also of the line of rain, which is slowly moving through Ontario. My own Geiger readings have recorded several high spikes just ahead of the system. In the U.S., current radar from IntelliCast shows significant precipitation occurring throughout the U.S. The jet stream and tropopause places the areas of highest risk in southern Alaska and the Pacific Northwest down through Fresno. Storm warnings have been issued for northern New Mexico, although their risk of fallout is low. A system moving through the Midwest currently has potential for fallout, which also affects the East Coast and southern states affected by this system. Unfortunately, the system passed through Chicago Sunday night, where thousands of protesters at the NATO summit would have been affected. Signs of radiation exposure through rain may cause skin burns, blisters, rashes, and overall symptoms may be severe fatigue, nausea, GI upset, and nosebleeds. If you were caught in the rain and experienced any of these things, you may wish to see a physician and have your urine tested for cesium exposure. Decontaminate the skin by soaking in a bath with baking soda and Epsom salts, both which can be purchased at your local drugstore. And check out the mitigation page at FukushimaFacts.com. In Europe, precipitation forecasts from USA Today show extensive rain and strong storms for most of Europe, except for Portugal, Denmark, and the UK. As high readings were found on the east coast of the US last week, all areas of precipitation should be avoided, especially in France and Germany, where the strongest water vapor bands are occurring. Nuke Report The chairman of the NRC, Gregory Jasko, resigned today. Turmoil within the organization in the wake of the Fukushima disaster preceded this news. In Braidwood, Illinois, there was a problem found with the structural integrity of the RPV head. The unit is currently defueled. And at Browns Ferry, Alabama, a licensed reactor operator had confirmed positive alcohol tests during a fitness for duty exam. The employee's unescorted access has been suspended. This message has been brought to you by Radchick in the Orion Talk Radio Network. We care about you because your government doesn't. Stay safe.